Polio is a contagious disease caused by a virus that mainly targets children. Before people knew the importance of sanitation, babies often contracted polio at a young age when their mother's immune system still protected them so the disease passed with no symptoms and the babies would not get polio again. As the importance of sanitation was recognized, children were not exposed to the polio virus until protection from their mother's immune system had long worn off. As a result, older kids became infected with polio and many experienced symptoms before the disease passed, 10 to 15 percent of them becoming paralyzed or killed when the virus attacked the nerves of the spine and brain. In the summer of 1916, the first outbreak of polio struck America. At the time, no one knew how people were getting polio and there was no cure. Efforts to stop the spread of the disease were futile. Every summer, polio would hit again. Compared to other epidemics, polio did not kill many people, but it left innocent children crippled and unable to live a normal life. To many, this was worse than death. In an effort to fight polio, the March of Dimes was formed. This group asked for small donations to help pay for treatment for polio patients and fund research on polio. Thanks to the funds, in 1955, Jonas Salk created the first polio vaccine, and in 1961, Albert Sabin created an improved version of it, ending the polio epidemic. Miss Anne Duffy was born in the later half of the polio epidemic, which lasted from 1916 to 1955. She remembered what it was like to be a child during the epidemic. She also entered nurses training during the polio epidemic and treated polio patients. When Miss Duffy was a child, polio was thought to be spread in dark, crowded rooms. As a result, Miss Duffy and her brother were not allowed to go to the movies because the movie theater was dark and had a lot of people. In 1953, when she entered nurses training, the polio wards in the hospital she worked in were overflowing and many patients had to stay in gurneys in the hallway. Some of the nurses in the hospital refused to care for the polio patients for fear of catching polio too, leaving student nurses like her who were not scared of catching polio to do the work. As part of treatment to remobilize limbs immobilized by polio, nurses would wrap the limbs in hot rags and move the limbs back and forth. Many patients were also put in machines that helped them breathe. These machines were called iron lungs. Miss Duffy felt incredibly sorry for the patients that were confined in the iron lungs because they were only let out to eat and they had to stay in the iron lungs the rest of the time. When polio paralyzed the limb, the patient would always be dependent on someone else. Jobs were limited and even cars had to be made a special way for them. Instead of killing, polio changed people in a way that made life harder, and that was what people feared about it. When a vaccine for polio finally came out, she, as well as the rest of the nation, was overjoyed and relieved that they no longer had to live in fear of getting polio. With the polio vaccine, people were made immune to the polio virus, ending the polio epidemic.